scorching planet exposed to the powerful rays of the nearby sun, a forbidding world filled with lethal contrasts, a lifeless sphere bearing the scars of destructive explosions, a mysterious celestial body that still holds many secrets. This is Mercury, the planet closest to the sun in our solar system. Let's find out more about it. Mercury is relatively close to Earth, but its exploration has always been fraught with difficulties. Due to its proximity to the sun, it can only be observed in the sky at the horizon, shortly before sunrise or just after sunset. This is actually why ancient astronomers mistook Mercury for two different celestial bodies, each given different names. Only advances in observation equipment have allowed scientists to gradually unravel some of the mysteries of this unusual world. Accumulated data show that Mercury is the smallest planet in the solar system. Indeed, it is even surpassed by some satellites. Its radius is 2,140 ellipsoidometers, or about 38% that of Earth. The celestial object is notable for its almost perfectly round shape, as the difference between its equatorial and polar diameters is no more than one kilometers. At the same time, given its modest size, Mercury has a surprisingly large mass. It is equivalent to 3.33 times 10 to the 23rd power, or about 5.5% that of Earth. Comparing Mercury's parameters with those of celestial objects close to it in size, Mercury is heavier than Ganymede and Titan combined, despite the diameter of both these objects being larger. This is likely due to the presence of a massive metallic core with a radius of up to 2,000 kilometers, which represents about 57% of the planet's volume. The core is surrounded by a 400-kilometer thick mantle layer composed of molten silicate rocks. This mantle, in turn, is covered by a hard crust 15 to 37 kilometer thick. The planet's surface is heavily cratered. Their analysis shows that the celestial body has not been particularly geologically active over the past 3.8 billion years. Bright sunlight makes Mercury difficult to observe with a telescope. However, this was the only way to study the planet until the second half of the 20th century. Everything changed in 1974 when the Mariner 10 space probe reached the planet's surroundings. It took photographs of 45% of the celestial body's surface and also measured its temperature and magnetic field. Furthermore, the probe's sensors recorded the exceptionally thin atmosphere, composed of helium and other gases. 30 years later, on August 3, 2004, another space probe separated from Earth, MESSENGER. It took 11 years to reach its goal, but the small probe overcame all obstacles and finally completed its mission. From 2011 to 2015, MESSENGER transmitted hundreds of thousands of images for scientists to review, including images of nearly Mercury's entire surface. These images provided important data on the body's internal composition and revealed various features of the planet's relief, some unique in the solar system. MESSENGER's sensors also helped provide insights into the solar wind and its unusual interaction with the planet's magnetosphere. Mercury follows an elongated elliptical orbit around the Sun, which takes 88 days to complete. At its perihelion, the planet approaches the Sun to within 0.31 astronomical units, with a distance of 0.47 astronomical units, one and a half times greater at aphelion. Mercury's orbital resonance, unique in the solar system, is of particular interest. Its stellar day is equal to 58.65 Earth days, or two-thirds of a Mercury year. This causes the planet to alternately face the Sun, first one side, then the other, at perihelion. These regions are the most exposed to solar radiation and are called hot meridians. One of these regions boasts Mercury's largest geological feature, marked on maps as Caloris Planitia. This name, which translates as heated plain, is fully justified as temperatures here reach 700 Kelvin or 427 degrees Celsius, making it the hottest place on the planet. The plane is a gigantic impact crater measuring 1,650 kilometers, 9 to 70 miles, representing about 2% of Mercury's total surface area. Estimates indicate that the crater formed approximately 3.9 billion years ago. After the planet's collision with a large asteroid, up to 100 meters in diameter, Mercury was then a young, hot protoplanet. 
The impact would have destroyed a large portion of the crust that had just solidified, and molten lava would have poured over a vast area of the planet's surface. As it cooled and solidified, the plane was surrounded by a rocky crust, resembling a bright, luminous patch easily visible against the dark valleys surrounding it. The surface of Caloris Planitia is dotted with numerous craters, some reaching 100 kilometers in diameter. However, the most notable feature of this plane is the Pantheon Fosse. Unique in the solar system, this feature consists of a radial array of 230 depressions, or extension forts, ranging from 1 to 8 kilometers wide. Most of the depressions are no more than 175 kilometers long, while others extend much further. Not far from the center of the Pantheon Fosse is a relatively large crater, Apollodorus, but it is not yet clear whether it has anything to do with the depressions. Today, there are several hypotheses regarding the formation of Pantheon Fosse. One posits that the gigantic cracks are due to tectonic activity, while another attributes them to the planet's cooling. Calaris Planitia is an area of flame and light. However, moving slightly north, we find a land of ice and darkness. Mercury's axis of motion is very small, which is why its polar regions are perpetually shrouded in twilight. Here, the sun hovers just above the horizon or is nowhere to be seen in the sky. Its rays haven't touched the bottom of some craters for millions of years. It's no wonder that Borealis Planitia, a plane surrounding the planet's north pole, is the coldest region on the planet. Temperatures in some areas hover around 80 Kelvin or 193 degrees Celsius below zero. Here, several deposits of water ice have been detected in the shadow of the mountain ridges surrounding the craters. Up to two meters thick, they are covered by a layer of rock dust that prevents the ice from evaporating. At the same time, at some altitudes which capture the sun's rays, temperatures can reach up to 380 Kelvin or 107 degrees Celsius. Interestingly, such contrasting areas of the surface can lie almost next to each other, yet the planet's thin atmosphere prevents them from exchanging heat effectively, and so this thermal contrast persists. Our tour takes us to more southern latitudes, virtually parallel to Caloris Planitia, but 3,500 kilometers to the west lies one of Mercury's largest craters, Rachmaninoff Crater. It is 290 kilometers in diameter and about 1 billion years old. At its center is a ring of high mountain peaks, about 130 kilometers in diameter. The rocks in this area are different from the rest of the landscape. They have a reddish hue and the surface features signs of solidified watercourses. This structure is presumed to be of volcanic origin and is the mark of one of the planet's last volcanic events. Mercury's lowest point, at 5,180 meters below the planet's average, was also recorded here. Beyond the central ring are relatively smooth, dark expanses. Moving south, we'll see a gigantic escarpment stretching 820 kilometers from southwest to northeast. It's called Enterprise Rupees, and in some places it reaches heights of several thousand meters. Mercury has several escarpments, but Enterprise Rupees is the largest. These bizarre landforms are believed to have formed as the planet cooled. As Mercury's interior released some of its heat, the celestial body shrank slightly, losing about 1% of its volume. This deformed the planet's lithosphere, producing gigantic folds. Nearly half of the Enterprise's rupees lie within Mercury's largest crater, called Rembrandt. Its diameter measures 716 kilometers, and the large basin contains a large number of minor reliefs. For example, there are small mountain ridges extending from the crater's outer ring to its center, their width is 1 in 10 kilometers, and their length can reach 180 kilometers. Another ridge forms a ring about 450 kilometers in diameter. An elaborate pattern of deep cracks, reminiscent of a spider's web, can also be seen on the crater floor. More detailed studies of the rocks that form the crater's surface are believed to help us better understand Mercury's internal composition and the processes that occur within it. Despite the intense attention given to Mercury by astronomers and despite advances in observation equipment, the planet remains mysterious and largely understudied. However, even Mercury cannot remain unexplored forever. Even now, the Beepa Colombo spacecraft is en route, rapidly approaching the celestial body. It is a joint project between ESA and Japan. The equipment on board the probe will help collect data on the planet's surface and atmospheric composition, 
study the magnetosphere and solar wind, and update information on the planet's relief. Bepi Colombo has already flown past Mercury, but there are still some elaborate maneuvers to perform later to reduce its velocity and re-enter its operational orbit around the planet. This is estimated to occur by 2025, after which the probe will continue to collect and transmit data. Unfortunately, it will be some time before a probe lands on Mercury's forbidding surface. The extreme conditions and accessibility challenges make this planet exceptionally challenging to explore. However, over time, it is destined to reveal its secrets to us. Despite everything, the exploration of the universe continues, and we're happy to observe this process with you. Feel free to thank our efforts with a like and subscribe to our channel to learn more about space. And let's stay in touch.